After watching this video, you should be able to describe cholinergic junctions, and that means what neurons are releasing acetylcholine, what receptor is acetylcholine acting on, and on which cells are those receptors found. And so the major cholinergic junctions are the neuromuscular junction between the lower motor neuron and skeletal muscle, peripheral ganglia between the pre- and post-ganglionic neurons of the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions of the ANS, the parasympathetic neuroeffector junctions, which are the post-ganglionic parasympathetic neurons onto an effector cell, sympathetic neuroeffector junctions, specifically sympathetic postganglionic neurons on the sweat glands as the effector organ, and there are cholinergic junctions in the central nervous system that do have clinical implications. Let's take a look at a comparison of the parasympathetic, sympathetic, and somatic motor systems, and just focus our attention on where we see green. Where we see green are cholinergic junctions. So we can see between the lower motor neuron and skeletal muscle, that's an acetylcholine being released there onto a nicotinic receptor, N sub M. We also see between every pre- and post-ganglionic neuron, including the adrenal medulla, we have acetylcholine acting on a neural nicotinic receptor. And remember, all these nicotinic receptors are ligand-gated excitatory cation channels. We also see we acetylcholine here released by parasympathetic postganglionic neurons onto effector cells, onto muscarinic receptors, either of the M2 or M3 subtype. And we have acetylcholine also released by some sympathetic postganglionic neurons that are going to sweat glands. So all these green junctions are all of our cholinergic junctions. Now let's take a different way of looking at it. And what we have here are all the types of neurons that could be releasing acetylcholine, the receptor that it's acting on, and again, the cell type and what the response is. So let's start on the left with the somatic motor system and we have our lower motor neurons there that have cell bodies in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. They release acetylcholine in response to various stimuli. It could be from an upper motor neuron, it could be a reflex. Whatever the case may be, acetylcholine is released and it acts on an N sub M receptor which is a ligand-gated ion channel that causes a depolarization of the skeletal muscle, a triggering of a muscle action potential, and ultimately that action potential, as it travels down the T-tubules, causes release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and that calcium binds to troponin on the actin myofilaments, and that causes a power stroke and shortening of the muscle, which we call contraction. The preganglionic neurons of both the parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions they release acetylcholine too. When the acetylcholine activates the neural nicotinic receptors, it excites the postganglionic neurons or adrenal medulla chromaffin cells and triggers either release of neurotransmitters or release of hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine from the adrenal medulla. So those are our nicotinic receptors and notice that for the skeletal muscle and postganglionic neuron or adrenal medulla chromaffin cells, those are not considered effector organs. The effector organ cells we're defining as smooth muscle, cardiac cells, and secretory glands. So here we have the parasympathetic postganglionic neuron, which was activated by acetylcholine acting on nicotinic receptors on its soma. Now, the acetylcholine activates muscarinic 2 receptors when the parasympathetic neuroeffector junction is at the heart. Remember, the M2 receptor is coupled to a G protein. In this case, its main G protein is an inhibitory G protein that lowers cyclic AMP. And what that does in the heart is inhibit the SA node and AV node function. And overall, we have inhibition of the heart, which is really decreased heart rate and decreased AV node conduction velocity. We also have acetylcholine from parasympathetic postganglionic neurons that are acting on M3 receptors that are coupled to GQ, which increase IP3 and diacylglycerol, increase intracellular calcium, and smooth muscle contraction occurs as a result of calcium calmodulin activating myosin light chain kinase, or we have the increase in calcium causes increased secretions from glands. So when you're thinking about parasympathetic Neuroeffector junctions, most of the junctions, most of the effects of acetylcholine are mediated through M3. Any smooth muscle that's going to contract as a result of parasympathetic input is going to be through an M3 receptor. 
any glandular secretion that's from parasympathetic is going to cause that effect through the M3 receptor. The only effect that's through M2 is on the heart. Now there's also sympathetic input to sweat glands that's cholinergic and in this case it's going to be an M3 receptor which again is coupled to GQ. Increased calcium causes increased sweating. Now, there's one other junction that's not shown here, and that's up in the central nervous system. And the reason why it's important to just remember that there is cholinergic signaling up in the brain in Alzheimer's disease, the neurodegeneration that's occurring is affecting some cholinergic signaling, and there's clinical implications there because we can use acetylcholinesterase inhibitors in Alzheimer's disease patients to increase cholinergic signaling in Parkinson's disease, even though the degeneration is of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra, there's actually an increase in cholinergic signaling up in the brain in the striatum, and muscarinic antagonists can be useful in Parkinson's patients as well. We also have muscarinic receptors and cholinergic signaling involved in some of the vestibular system, and we use muscarinic antagonists to treat motion sickness with drugs like scopolamine, for example. So it is important to understand that there is cholinergic signaling in other locations in the central nervous system, but the major thrust of cholinergic signaling that you should understand are in these particular junctions. And that concludes this lecture on cholinergic junctions.